Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. And I'm sure as you saw by the title today, we're going to be talking about Dragon Ball Fighters. Uh, I don't want to talk about the update that everyone is talking about as well with the assists and blah blah blah. I'm mostly interested in the fighters as I'm sure you guys are as well. And I'm also sure that you guys have seen uh, this crazy weekend that I have seen. Um, they revealed the two characters from their current season three roster. Uh, one, which we already expected, Goku Ultra Instinct. Not to mention he was kind of leaked, so there's that. But the leak wasn't confirmed, so yeah, we still all kind of expected it. And one I was hoping didn't quite make the roster, and this is one many did expect to make the roster, Kefla. <laughs> Now, I'm not saying Kefla's a bad character. There's just an opportunity for a lot more characters to get the spotlight. However, I think the cool part about Kefla being in this game is that we might actually get to see that insane cutscene of when Goku eliminates Kefla, which I think is probably what they're working on right now. You know, since they've already got the Jiren cutscene finished, which is probably a lot easier to do um, considering they're just flying and grabbing and really tackling each other. That doesn't really seem too hard to do, um, especially with the money and budget they have. However, in the Kefla scene, Goku is doing a lot of jumping around and dodging, especially that midair dodge when Kefla does her double blasts. That's probably going to be really hard to uh, recreate, um, especially in the game. So I'm sure they're doing their best right now so they can make it look uh, the best for fans. I'm sure, like as we saw the Jiren one. Even though it's a bunch of grabbing and tackling, they did a really good job of it. And it's basically almost identical to the anime, except for a few little differences where Goku's hair is not flashing in Super Saiyan form, which would have been cool to see, but I'm still grateful for what we got. But with that being said, um, there's still three more roster spots left, um, or it could be four, who knows? Because it initially showed four in this fighter past, and then it pushed over um, a side of the screen to bump up Kefla. So they could probably do the same for the last character. And I'm sure if they do, it's going to be a character that no one expects. Like, probably I'd say Whis or Belmod, which is crazy. But maybe, you know, they would. Or maybe even Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, which would blow my... <laughs> it would blow my mind away if they actually did that. I mean, he's probably the most badass looking character in all of Dragon Ball Z or GT, you pick. But I'm sure they'll only do that if he's the sixth character, which as it currently stands, he's not. It's only five and two have just been revealed, which leaves us wondering what the last three could be. Well, I presume they'll probably give us two fighters from each season. And this is considering that they'll actually reveal the last and sixth guy. So let's take that into account and actually assume they will. Um, I think they'll give us two fighters from each season. Um, since they already gave us two guys some super, I doubt they're going to do super again. So I definitely think they'll give us two characters uh, from GT and two characters from Z. So as far as Dragon Ball Z goes, I think the two fighters will be um, one Master Roshi and two Dabura uh, because they both have really unique fighting styles. Uh, with Master Roshi, you know, I feel like if he was in a game like Dragon Ball Z Universe or even if he was in Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, they wouldn't really take full advantage of his fighting style. Whereas Dragon Ball Z Fighters, I think would take full advantage of his fighting style. You know, in my opinion, Dragon Ball Z Fighters is really skill based, you know, uh, those heavy, medium and light punches actually take into effect. They actually, you know, make a difference um, opposed to games like Xenoverse or Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, where you just need that one big expansive, you know, that one big, you know, ability like Goku's Spirit Bomb and you just slam it down and the person lose chunk of that health. I feel like if you do that in this game, you know, you can still come back with those light, heavy and, you know, medium punches. And I feel Master Roshi is the perfect fit for that. I never had uh, experience with Master Roshi in, in other Dragon Ball Z games, but I feel like if he was in this one, they could incorporate his fighting a lot with his staff. Uh, maybe uses a turtle shell of his back a little bit. Not to mention he has a lot of cool powers like the Mafuba. Nah. 
Or evil containment wave. You pick. And I think um, his ultimate would probably be him getting buff and using his Kamehameha wave. That would be uh, pretty damn cool to look at. As far as Debora goes, I just have this really fond memory of him in uh, Dragon Ball Z Budokai 3. I just like the way his dark energy looked and the way he would incorporate, the way they would incorporate his sword, you know, with his moves. And it's just really this malicious look and feel to him that I really adore and I would just like to see on these beautiful graphics. He was also on Dragon Ball Z Universe 2 and I think they did a great job with his moves on that game. But it's like I said, uh, you know, Xenoverse doesn't really do a good job of displaying those moves uh, to Dragon Ball Z level, not the anime level, and I think Fighters does. So seeing Deboer on this game would definitely um, give him a boost. It would definitely, uh, I think, make characters love his character more and probably ask to see him in Super, in the next Super, or at least see a demon in the next Super. So yeah, he's definitely someone I would like to see in Dragon Ball Z Fighters. Also, they could incorporate the cutscene where he gets turned into a cookie and eaten. Uh, by Boo. That would be uh, pretty great to see. So presumably for the last character, um, I think they'll try to hit us with straight up nostalgia, you know, hit us right in the feels. Um, so I've decided between one of these three, either Omega Shinron, Baby Vegeta or Oob. Now, if I had to choose um, which one brings us the most nostalgia, it would probably be Baby Vegeta. But there's already three Vegetas in the game and I think we all know how they treat Vegeta. Trust me, three Vegetas is more than we could ask for. So that really leaves us down to two characters, Oob and Omega Shenron. Now, I know Oob in Budokai 3 had a pretty weak moveset but something like a, a cannon key blast and a fury of punch and kicks. He was definitely my uh, least favorite character in that game. However, I know Oob in Xenoverse 2, which was released recently with, along with uh, Android 21, uh, I know he is a lot more diverse. You know, they incorporate a lot of moves like uh, Goku Super Dragon Fist and Super Kamehameha Wave, which is cool to, you know, to see because it shows that He's learned a thing or two from Goku. And it's also, I think, it's moves he learned in Dragon Ball GT. So that's cool. But also they incorporate his own moves like Innocence Breath and uh, Lightning Impact, which kind of shows the, you know, the Innocence Breath kind of brings out the uh, Oob or Boo in him, which I think is really cool. Now, I know Oob brings a lot of people nostalgia considering he's in the original Dragon Ball Z, but he only had a little bit amount of screen time. And even when they brought him in GT, his screen time still wasn't as much. So it's kind of debatable if, you know, he's really that much of a nostalgic uh, character. Now we have Omega Shinron, and I remember him in Budokai 3, and I remember loving his moveset. Like, the aggression in his punches and kicks were just awesome to feel and use every time. His power is like, you know, his delayed uh, Dragon Thunder was fun. And the minus power ball was just so damn cool to look at. Once again, uh, Omega Shenron is also in Xenoverse 2, but Xenoverse just has a way of showing abilities that look a lot less entertaining than they do in other Dragon Ball Z games. Now I think in terms of versatility, I think Omega Shenron wins um, probably by a landslide because his moves are just uh, that much better to look at and they're just that much better to use. And I think it would be that much better in Fighters. Not to mention, I think we could change his colors. Uh, that would be a lot cool. Seeing Omega Shinron in all red would be pretty awesome to see, or green. You know, in terms of customizable ability like that, uh, I think he also wins. However, I think they'll choose Oob because they only have two boos in the game, one. And considering how they seem to like having multiple versions of the same character in this game, 
why wouldn't they put Oob in this game? Uh, not to mention, I think seeing his interactions with everyone would just be a lot better, opposed to having someone like Shinron interact with everyone. I mean, how would it look? You know, I think I've had a bit of a change of heart. I like the challenge of fighting your fusion again. It'll be fun. What would he do? What would he say? It would just kind of be weird and awkward, and it wouldn't really make for a remembering experience, rather than someone like Oob, you know, you have Oob talk to Boo, that would be cool to see Kid Boo, or you have Oob talk to Frieza, I mean, wouldn't you like to see that? Or if Oob would talk to someone like Vegeta or Cell, just seeing those interactions would just make the whole uh, game a lot better, and yeah, I think it would definitely give fans an excitement, because Oob's a cool character in general, and I think we'd like to see those interactions, opposed to someone like Shinron. <laughs> Also, a lot of these characters um, that I mentioned have, I think they probably have a pretty good medium, heavy, and light attacks and combos. But I can't say that I was uh, the best at them, considering I only played my brothers and, well, they sucked. Really? So, yeah, I wouldn't really consider myself an expert in uh, that category. I'd rather leave that up to people who know how to fight uh, like an expert decide anyway that's just my opinion i have no idea if they'll put any of these characters i just mentioned in i mean they could be totally unorthodox and give us fighters like topo or dispo or maybe even something crazy like belmod yeah that would never happen at least not in this season or maybe even game for that matter uh for all we know this could be the last season and they're probably working on a new game as we speak it would definitely make them more money, that's for sure. Especially considering they wouldn't even have to really change the, any of the graphics. They would have to change little things like the modes a little bit, uh, a little bit of gameplay, and definitely alternate costumes. If they don't put that in one of the updates uh, later this year. But I've sidetracked. If you guys didn't agree with anything I just said, then please comment your opinions below of what characters you would like to see. Also, if you guys enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. There's still so much of this year left and so much games to be played, stories to be revealed, and records to be broken. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Till next time.